Good evening and welcome to Terp Talk Football with Lamont Jordan. This is Wayne Viner, and we've got a lot of Terp football to talk about. Got the comeback win over Virginia, a trip to Michigan State, and being 3-0, all things are still possible, Lamont. You could still get to 5-0 and and go to Ohio State and see what happens there. But let's take a look back at the Maryland game against Virginia. Once again, the slow start. We talked about it last week. What did you see that was different in the slow start last Friday night against Virginia? Well, Wayne, when I look, just being there on the sideline, looking at these three games, um, having three games where we got off to slow starts, this one was different. The first two games, you can kind of see the guys coming to the sideline, um, kind of trying to figure things out. Against UVA, these guys were coming off the field. They were shaking their head. They had a confidence about them as if they knew that they could go out here and move the ball on this team and dominate this team. And and I was saying it on the broadcast a few times that, you know, we're just a few assignments away from blowing this thing wide open. And so I think these guys just really had confidence in themselves. Once they settled down and made the plays that were out there to be made, um, you, you saw what the result was. We did. You talked last week about how much this game meant to you. Being on the field, even as a reporter against UVA, did you get the vibe that you that you were looking for in a contest like this? I did, man. I did. I mean, just the environment as a whole. The environment as a whole, man, was just it, it was it was beautiful, especially the beginning of the fourth quarter when they dropped the lights. Everybody turns their camera phones on. Man, it was just, it, it was great to be down there. But to, the energy felt the way I was hoping that it felt before the game, and the energy felt the way I thought it would feel during the game. And from opening kickoffs, it, you could, you could, it was hitting going on out there. Just like I said, when you play against Virginia, it's a bloodbath. And, and there was a lot of hitting going out there. The environment was a great environment. The student section absolutely showed up. They were there at the beginning of the game. It, it was just a great environment, man. Uh, it sounds like you had fun. Uh, it sounds like you had the kind of fun that you were looking for, which is always important. I know you cover the team because you love the team. I know you like being in radio, but you're not there for the paycheck. You're there because it's the turfs. Uh, Maryland offense, still a work in progress. The three-headed running back room showed up. Hemby was was pretty good. They go with Littleton. And then McDonald comes in and looks spectacular. He talk about the differences in those running backs and why they're slotted, Hemby, Littleton, and then McDonald. Well, I think Hemby, it's obvious why he starts. I mean, I think that, you know, with what he did last year, um, you know, he's proven that he's the outright starter. As far as Antoine, uh, Antoine just has to get going. And when you look at McDonald, these, this is a three-headed monster. Uh, there are three different styles of backs. Hemby is the faster, quicker, um, more agile. Antoine is the thumper. Uh, uh, you know, he can hold up with regards to pass protection. And when you're talking about picking up short yardage and wanting to weigh on the defense, Antoine's able to do that. And Kobe, he just, man, he's just, he's patient. He's patient as a runner. Um, I like his vision. And, and he showed what he's capable of doing out there. Um, this run game still hasn't gotten going the way that, that I would like to see it going. And I think that before the season is over, that if we're going to reach our goal, that we have to find some consistency within, within our run game. To me, the left side of the offensive line is far ahead of the right side. And I guess that you start calling plays in a particular way because of that. Uh, there's the one young man who transferred in from Frostburg State who's supposed to be the right tackle, hasn't played much. Do you think as a coach that you can develop the right side of that line to even up with the side that's led by Glaze? Well, I believe our right tackle is a walk-on. And, yes. and he, struggled. he struggled all season long. And, you know, you kind of expect that from a walk-on. But when it's all said and done, when you put on the helmet, you put on the shoulder pads, and you put that uniform on and you're playing against another team, you, you got to go out there and you just have to play ball. And the left side is ahead, um, as you said. The, once we get our right tackle, our starting right tackle, I think you will see things balance out more. 
but you also have to talk about the tight ends. When you're struggling at the at, at the offensive line position, your tight end and your fullback, which we don't really play with a fullback, those guys are your extra linemen. And so we just have to continue to 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 get better at that. Uh, I think from an offensive play calling standpoint, there were a lot of there were a lot of things that we missed. There were some holes that we missed. We talk about we would have had a big play in a run game if we could get our our left guard pulling. He he runs into um, one of the linemen who are getting pushed back. Just these little things need to get worked out. And so as we continue to play week after week, you can see that we got better against UVA. We just cannot continue to have these slow starts. All right. So the tight end, I know Deitchus gets most of the work there. He wears the number two jersey, more of a pass catcher. Rico Walker's got a lot of run. He wore 17. He's a freshman. Preston Howard got a big catch, and he hurtled a Virginia defensive uh, back. He looked uh, spectacular in that one play. And they have used A.J. Szymanski, who's about 6'5", 255, went to Loyola Blakefield in Baltimore. And he, early on, was the blocking tight end in this formation. I've seen fewer four wide out and a little more of that extra tight end in there, I guess, to do the pass pro. But, yeah, you're relying on a walk-on, and then your tight ends, for the most part, are freshmen, so there's room to grow there. But you can get hopeful. A 6'5", 255 tight end looks pretty good. Still a freshman, might not play that well. I think if C.J. Dupree, who transferred to Alabama, was still here, there's a possibility he might have suited up as the right tackle. He he was the size of guy, and I think losing him really hurt. These freshmen are good, but they're not as good as C.J. Dupree. I know they got a lot of NIL to go play tight end in Alabama, but he's a guy that I think this offense misses. Anyhow, that's enough of me on my soapbox. Let's look at the Maryland defense. You mentioned the hitting. Somewhere in the middle of the second quarter, boy, did they turn it up. You You could here you could feel the contact they started swarming the ball like a really good defense and virginia stuck with it for a while they didn't fold immediately we'll get to the three interceptions in a row uh you know donnell brown who was 19 pretty well did you coach him when he was in high school no i didn't coach donnell he was there um he was there i believe the year before i got there um but he's a kid that that he's showing up every time he drops back. Seems like every time he drops back to go cover the flats, the, the quarterbacks just seem to think that he's a guy that you could just throw to. And he's just showing you over and over again where you better be smart where you're throwing the ball. Um, with that said, we have a lot of good talent on defense. And you talk about the hitting. I think from a defensive standpoint, the tone got set uh, when Miller, number 13, yeah. I believe they ran a, a flare route to the running back. And and I mean, he shot out like a rocket, came up full speed, put his face mask in the chest of the running back. And I think that from that point on, things just really got rolling from the defensive standpoint. Um, and, I, and I've talked about this on or, or, or on the show and on the broadcast, the importance of us getting guys who are getting a lot of playtime, young guys getting playtime. That talks about the depth of the Terps. And when you talk about going through a long season, having to concern yourself with guys getting hurt. We have guys that are getting such significant playing time that as the season goes on, it doesn't matter who's in the game. You feel pretty confident in the guy who, who's going to step up and go in. And Coach Locks has created an environment where if you don't do your job, you better be worried about being benched because there are players that have shown that they're capable and they're ready to play. It's true. The Maryland still plays three defenses. Uh, three three groups of guys, and you know you'd think that when the game's on the line, you would go back with what I call your A team. But look, he's got confidence in these guys like Colbert at nose tackle. Uh, still plays Jeremy Spragans, who was a starter a couple of years ago, but now it's probably in the second or third group of linebackers. You still see Kobe Thomas out there, who's really put his time in. Where's number thirty five, a linebacker from Dematha. All those guys still play, and the same thing's true in the defensive backfield when they need people to step up. Glendon Miller made an impact last year. He's a junior now. He's really stepping into that role. Gavin Gibson, who was 26, played as a freshman last year. He was hurt the first few games. He was on the field a lot. 
against Virginia, and he had an impact. If Maryland's front five, six guys, but generally five guys can tie up that offensive line, the safeties, and Miller qualifies as a safety with Bo Braid and Trader. If you can let those guys get free and make tackles going downhill, you can create the environment that Maryland created on Friday night where they're delivering the hit. They're starting to make plays behind the line of scrimmage, and it changes the game. And I'm not sure any of that led to what I would say is an epic meltdown by Calandria, the Virginia quarterback. I've never seen a player throw three interceptions on three consecutive passes. Have you? Uh, no, not that I can remember, but you, you have to that, – that's, it goes back to talking about the job that the defense did. And defense coordinator, Coach Williams, he just does a phenomenal job, especially in the second half, of just absolutely just suffering offenses. And those guys are responding, man. Um, I, I was really impressed with what I saw from the team, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Now, you talk about if, the, if, if those front three, front four guys can hold up the offensive line, that, that opens things up for our safeties to make tackles. I don't want my safety being the one that has to constantly come down and make tackles. Somewhere in there, our linebackers have to do a better job of filling those holes, getting to the hole before the running back do. I would much rather have my linebackers and my D linemen being the ones making the tackles and not necessarily the safeties having to come down there and run support. Uh, also, from a defensive standpoint, if you look at two games where we get hurt, where, where offenses hurt us, is there are too many times that we allow the quarterback to run for long yards. It, it worked against our first three opponents, but when you're talking about playing against the Ohio States, the Michigans of the world, those are things that could be the difference between winning and losing the game. There's a difference between getting off the field on third and long or allowing the quarterback to scramble for a first, get, for a first down to sustain a drive. So that's something that I would really like to see the defense step up, and it really starts with the defensive front being disciplined in their rush lanes. It does. How do you keep – absolutely. That is what's wrong. They they are hunting the quarterback. They get out of the lanes. They get bunched up in the middle, and there is no edge to that pass rush. And it's easy to escape the pocket when there's no containment. How do you get young players who are chasing that sack to stay where they're supposed to be? Well, I think I think you can say that it's young players, but – that's something that you get with a 3-4 defense. If you're rushing three out of a 3-4 defense or you're lining up in a three, uh, three down alignment, it creates bigger lanes. As a running back, I used to love running against 3-4 defenses because if, if one guy is out of place, if you get enough push on one guy, it's going to open up lanes and that gives you more space to work off of the linebackers. And I think that Coach Williams has done a great job, especially in the second half, of, of bringing more pressure to close down those lanes. It's just a matter of the guys continuing to watch it on film, being disciplined in practice throughout the course of the week, and 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 not necessarily worry so much about being the guy that makes the play as much as it is being the guy that's doing your job to eat up what you have to eat up so that the free guy can go and make the play. That's that is an excellent point, and I absolutely agree with that. We'll be back in a moment. This podcast, as all of our podcasts this season, brought to you by Rick Jacklich, the big dog himself. It's a big dog. It's a small firm. It's an exclusive group of award-winning lawyers that can take your personal injury or medical malpractice case and make sure that you win as much as you can. Let Jacklich fight for you. There's no need to pay any fees until the big dog wins your case. You can reach the big dog at 301-381-1222. And of course, our hometown Terrapin IT team. If you have IT problems, call Viner Four Gates. The help desk fixes issues fast. And our goal is to make your company work. Cybersecurity, network, PC issues. Call Viner Four Gates at 877-797-8776. We've been in business since 1991. It's our 12th season backing Turp Talk and the Sports Maven. Once again, that's Viner Forgates at 877-797-8776.
Before we turn our attention to Michigan State, I want to bring up one of the coaches. You mentioned how uh, what a great job he does last week, and that is Henry Baker, who's a defensive backs coach. When you talk to all the coaches, just talking to him, it, that's one of the coaches just jumps off the page at you. What do you make of Henry Baker and his fantastic recruiting in that defensive backfield? I think Bake has gotten his players to play the way he played. Bake was a very aggressive guy. You know, Bake was going to come up and hit you, um, and he understands the discipline that's needed. And and those guys, they compete, man. They really, really compete. And I think that when you look at the wide receiver core that we have all throughout training camp, the DBs and the wide receivers going at one another, uh, Coach Baker is a competitor, man. He He's not a guy that's a social media athlete. He's not a guy that's out there worrying about whether his players like him or not. He just goes out there and gets the job done. And I was happy to see that Locks brought him in as a defensive backs coach. Um, prior to the pandemic, when I was calling games, I used to absolutely murder our defensive backs because they just were not good at all. Their technique was horrible. They were constantly getting beat, not making plays that they should make. But these guys have definitely taken on their position coach's attitude, his mentality, which is aggressive, his mentality, which is we're going to go out here and ball out, and his mentality, which we don't bow down and we don't back down and we aren't afraid of anybody. And he's got his players to do that, man. So I uh, definitely take my hat off to him. And and is and today with today's athletes, you often hear about guys who it's hard to coach them hard. And to see that they're receiving that hard coaching, it, it's showing up there on game day. It does. He he is. And if you, like I said, if you get a chance to talk to him, you can within a minute tell why he is successful at this. And I, I assume he will be successful at this for a long time and probably sooner or later at the next level. Now, Michigan State. Maryland goes to Michigan State. Maryland has not done well at Michigan State. Yeah, Maryland's beaten Michigan State a few times in College Park, not so much in East Lansing. But big change. Harlan Barnett, who went to Michigan State, graduated in the 90s. The coach, Tucker, is out. We don't need to get into why. Have you been part of a team in your career where something like this has happened that just thrown the team upside down in the middle of the season? No, I haven't. I, I've never been a part of, of anything like that. The one thing I can tell you as a competitor is regardless of what's going on in the front office, at the end of the day, when you line up and play against somebody, playing against a team that's wearing a different uniform, that has a different mascot, you just have to go out there and do your job. You hope that the coaches that are there that are, will put you in the right position. But when it's all said and done, when you're out there and you're playing the game, that's your opportunity to, to get your relief from whatever distractions are going on throughout the course of the week. And so as we prepare for the Michigan State game, you know, this isn't a situation. Our problems aren't Michigan State's problems. At the end of the day, Mike Loxley is our head coach. We have a great coaching staff. and We have a group of players that's out there with the mentality and the hope of competing for the Big Ten championship. So we can't worry about uh, what's happened in the previous years while going to Michigan State. This is a different year. Uh, this team has a different mentality, a different attitude, and and I fully expect for us to go up there and take care of business. Right, right. Well, you know, I'm, I've got the fan view that we never play well there, and certainly you got the coach's view that is, and I've heard Loxley say this for quite some time now, it's all about what we do. If Maryland does what Maryland does, it doesn't matter what the other team is doing. If we execute we can be successful. And I think the talent level is there to make that true. If Maryland plays the game that they're capable of playing, they're going to win most of the games. But as a fan, you look at this, what could be a mess at Michigan State and go, oh boy, this can be a breakout game. It's on national TV again. Uh, it's also on Sirius XM 136 if you can't find it on TV or on 105.7 The Fan or 980 in D.C. And fan view is this is a chance to actually beat up on a Big Ten team that's having some of their own problems. And maybe we can get a few more votes and jump in the top 25. I guess your player coach view 
is you can't worry about any of that. It doesn't matter. You just have to go out and play. Is that what they're probably saying behind closed doors? I would hope so. I I, I think that it, I used to think this, this was my mentality as a running back, and I had to make sure that I catch myself. There were times that coming into the season, I would set a goal, oh, I want to rush for this many yards. I would watch film, and I would say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get this many yards this game. And oftentimes things didn't go as, as I expected. But when I sat back and, and, and approached every game with the mentality, I'm going to take what the defense gives me and I'm going to fight for extra. If those guys go out there with the mentality that I'm going to go out there and do my job offensively as a, as a skilled player, I'm just going to get what the defense gives me and I'm going to fight for the extra. If those guys from an offensive standpoint go out there and do that, we'll put up big yards, we'll put up big numbers. From a defensive standpoint, if those guys just go out there, hey, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to do my job, and I'm going to do what I have to do to allow the other guys to make plays, and then when it's my opportunity to make a play, go out there and make the play. If everybody just goes out there and does their job, I think that this team will be fine. Okay, we're going to wrap this one up. And uh, make another attempt. We tried to do this early in the week. Didn't work out. We'll try and be back with you early next week and take a look at this Michigan State game. I thought I knew more about pretty much all three teams that we have played, that Maryland's played this year, than I do about Michigan State. The change there, I don't know what to expect. They came out flat last week and didn't recover at all. so maybe this is a, a really down team, but it's always dangerous to play a wounded team. Maybe they just had a bad week last week and they'll come out and be the Michigan State that we thought. I have no clue. Um, do you have any gut feel for what you're going to see from them on Saturday? To be honest with you, I could really care less what I see from them. It, it doesn't matter to me. I, it, it, I care about what our guys do. When you go out there and you play a football game, your opponent is going to present something to you. It's your job to go out there, meet whatever it is that they are bringing your way. It's your job to meet that. It's your job to go out there and do your job. We can't worry about what their mentality is and what they may be coming with. We can't worry about that. You got a job to do. You go out there, do your job. You fly out there, you get a win. You fly home and you get ready for the next opponent. And with that, that'll wrap us up. Lamont, thanks for doing this. Once again, I've heard from so many fans that say that the perspective that you bring is just not hurt any place else. For Lamont Jordan, this is Wayne Viner. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and we will see you next week on Turp Talk Football with Lamont Jordan.